Welcome to the course Spring Boot. This is lecture 10, Spring Data JPA. In this lecture, what we are going to do is instead of using our array list that we were building in our state service class, we will be connecting uh, our application to a database using JPA. So, let us begin with this lecture and let us have a look what JPA stands for. Uh, JPA is Java Persistence API, which is a specification which allows you to use the object relational modeling. What object relational modeling is? It is also known as ORM. It maps a class entity to relational database table. Uh, you provide some metadata in the class which specifies like which is the primary key and what is going to be the entity. Uh, it maps automatically to the relational data, uh, whatever database you are using. In our case, we are using Apache Derby. So, let us begin with our code. Uh, let us go back to the code and uh, we will go back to our class, which is state. This is the database that we want. We want a table name state with column values, state code and state name. So, um, what I am going to do is uh, I am going to define this class as an entity this is our entity and what we are doing is we are mapping our entity uh, to our database derby and jpa is gonna do this for us so this is it we have defined our class state as an entity and we need to import java x dot persistence and the same for id so id is the primary key for the table that's what we are telling and spring is gonna map it uh, to create a new table in our local Apache Derby database uh, that we have just included in our project. So, this is it. We have defined our entity. Now, let us go back to the state service and let us have a look at what we are trying to do in here. So, here we want to get rid of this uh, array and state we want to connect uh, to the database. So, the state service needs to connect to the database to perform all these CRUD operations that we are doing in here. So, uh, the thing is uh, to get rid of this thing, uh, we need some other third layer which will communicate with our database. Uh, so, we need a data service layer uh, which will perform all these operations for us. To start with, uh, I will just create a new class and this will be basically our data service. So, I am just going to name it uh, state repository, which will be providing a connection to database and provide these facilities that we, we need uh, in our service layer. So, what all we need is suppose this is uh, the class, which is data service. What we want to do in here, I want to mm, get all the states I will write method for get all states. Uh, we need a get state for one particular ID. So, this is what I want to do. I am just writing it in comment. So, to explain that what all functionality we are expecting um, out of this uh, repository which act as a data service layer for us. So, we want to update state on the basis of uh, the state uh, object which is state s. Uh, this is the object that we are going to pass and uh, on the basis of state code also. So, which is string state code uh, on the basis of the state code which has been passed in method as a string and we are passing an entity of uh, object of a state class uh, to replace and update the functionality, uh, update the state for our uh, data data set and the other thing we need is a delete function again it will be a string of state code that we are passing so we, we need all these functionality basically the CRUD operations like create read update and delete so uh, th these are the functionalities that we are expecting out of our data service layer but that there is one automatic built in uh, interface from the spring jpa and it is called as a crud repository 
uh, it's an interface th which is a generic interface which performs the basic CRUD operations and which defines the by default uh, CRUD operation functions. Uh, if you need some extra functions, customized functions, then you can define it in here. So, what we need is we do not need a class in here, we need a interface uh, state repository which extends, I will just name it capital for following the naming convention, I uh, will just refactor it to state. So, we need an interface which extends the CRUD repository interface which I have just mentioned about. So, CRUD repository interface and if you save it, it will give you from where it is coming. So, import CRUD repository or the spring framework data dot repository. This is the repository that we want to implement. So, this is uh, the interface that has a generic method which take a generic type that what kind of method it is. So, we are passing a state instance with a string uh, type of uh, primary key that we are passing. So, this CRUD repository is going to implement the method CRUD, uh, CRUD methods for class state which is an entity and which is going to be a relational database table. Uh, after JPA uh, scans it and find it, it is a it is an entity. So it's going to create a state table with ID of a string type and create the methods automatically which are available to consume at the state service layer. So let's have a look at how it works. So what we need in state service, we need instance of a state repository. Uh, which will be having uh, CRUD operations, CRUD methods that are defined in a CRUD repository. So, we need to create a member variable uh, in our uh, controller, um, sorry, in our state service to consume that state repository. So, what I am going to do is private uh, state repository and I am going to make a variable state repository and I need to auto wire it because this is a dependency that spring needs to know how to bring it in here. So, we are doing a auto wired uh, to the state repository and we need to import uh, beans factory annotation auto wired. So, this is done. We have created an instance of our data service layer and instead of defining all these methods, we will see that how this CRUD repository built in interface is providing a generic CRUD operations. Our aim is to get rid of this array list and instead use the database. But before that, um, let us have a look at what all methods this state repository is providing us to access and perform these operations. So, to return uh, all states, uh, instead of returning the states um, list which we are building in here, let us have a look what all we have in here. So, uh, what I am going to do is I am going to use the state repository member variable that we have just created. Uh, so, this thing uh, has all these methods like count, delete, delete all. So, what we want to do is find all in our find all the states in our state repository and this is going to be a collection. So, for uh, after finding a collection, we want to iterate over the collection. So, for each uh, state uh, which we find, we, we need to perform some action and what that action is going to be, we want to build a list of Mm, states and uh, append that uh, state which we have found each state into that list and return that list. So, let us build a list of type state uh, and just name it as a states and create a new array list just name it uh, as a array list of any type uh, of complex data type 
and what we want in this action is we want to append um, in states whatever state you want to find we want to append in this state. So, this is uh, Java 8 lambda expression which appends into this list the each object uh, with a double colon and add operation. So, you can just write a simple for loop and uh, append every state which have you found in uh, state repository to this state array list that we have built, but this is Java 8 lambda expression that I am going to use. Uh, so, let us start with this thing, it is expecting a lit list state. So, I am going to return the list that we have just built right here. So, this is really easy and it is all done for this method. So, let us have a look at adding state. Uh, the skip for uh, get state for a single state code, we will come back to that one later. Uh, to add uh, a state, it is pretty simple that what we want in here is there is no return type. So, we want to ex access the state repository and see what all method we do have to add a state. So, here you can see that we do have a method name save and we just need an entity which is a state object that we are getting in here. So, this is done. So, this state repository is giving us a save uh, function and giving us a find all for which we are returning state. So, let us test this whether this is all working or not because we are using a state repository now we are not using the old function that we have defined which is returning this array list. Uh, we have a new functions and we want to test this now. So, let us run this application and let it run uh, on port 8080. You can see oh, there are some error. No, uh, it has started. So, the application has started on port 8080 and we will go back and we will do the let us get rid of everything and make a new get request on 8080 with states. here you get the empty array list because our database has initialized as soon as the spring framework is started. A new instance of DB has started and we do not have anything. That is why we have a, a added add state method we have worked on and we can add a new state. So, let us go back to our postman and make a new post request for the states with a body of Tennessee uh, and we are going to hit a post request and you will get a 200 OK response. It means the state has been added to the DB and when you make a GET request, you will be able to see the Tennessee in here. So, here is the Tennessee state. Uh, Let us do another one for sake of confirmation. Uh, so, we are going to add a state Georgia. We will make a POST request and when do we do the get request, we should get Tennessee and Georgia. So, this confirms us that this add state and this get all states is using the state repository and it is working all fine. So, this is it guys. In the next lecture, we will see uh, and implement the other methods uh, and we will get rid of this array list object. Right now, I can also comment this, but it is going to error out for the other method. So, we will do it in the next lecture. Uh, see you guys.